I get some of this where I didn't understand why, but uh, okay, that actually looks kind of nice. Hello, you dirty potters. How are you today? I think it's finally time in our intermediate section to learn how to make bottle shapes much like this. Once you get a hold of the couple basic steps it actually takes to make a bottle, making a bottle is actually extremely easy. When you think about it, a bottle is pretty much just a cylinder that you've popped out a little bit and then choked or collared in the clay to one specific point in order to make the mouth. So we're going to tackle this shape step by step. Today, we're going to learn how to make a straight cylinder, and we're going to talk about collaring in the mouth here. Then, we're probably going to talk about bowing this part out and keeping that collared in mouth. And then, as a final video, we're probably going to learn to make a double humped gourd, something that even in the ceramic art world is a little bit difficult. You gotta make a cylinder, and then you gotta pop the clay out, and you put it back in, and you pop it back out, and you put it back in. And you gotta make sure the lip is curved correctly to pop it back out up his, it's a whole thing. Now before we get this video started, there's two primary techniques that you must have down before you start to make a bottle. Number one, you should have already learned how to pop a body out with your fingers. This is the primary step in making this bowl shape right here, and you should have probably already learned it when learning how to make a bowl. If you already know how to make a basic bowl and you already know that movement of popping your fingers out to extend the body of clay on the wheel, then you're probably fine, you don't have to worry about that. The more difficult of the two, however, is the one where you have to choke or collar in clay in order to make the mouth part here. Popping out clay is fairly easy, the centrifugal force of the wheel kind of helps you with that. But learning how to collar in some clay, well, that's a little bit more difficult. But it's okay, because I've already made videos on both of these subjects, both of which I will link down below for you. I highly suggest you watch both of them first, as we are going to be building upon this technique as we go along even into the advanced stages of ceramic artwork when we talk about smaller tops. I mean, I know you guys can tell that I choked this in to make this mouth part right here, but sooner or later, we're gonna build upon this and go into the advanced phases of ceramic artwork, where we're gonna choke stuff in so much so that we're only gonna have this much space at the very top so that it can actually survive in the bisque but doing this requires a whole lot of choking so you really need to master this skill so that we can move forward considering most of you already know how to make a bowl and considering most of you already know how to choke or call your clay in let's get started by making hey. a cylinder For this one video, we're going to learn how to form the top part of this bottle shape right here. We're not really worried about this part for the moment, just because that'll come in a later video so that we can learn how to mold the two techniques together. But for now, we're concentrating on the very top part. That being said, you don't really want your cylinder to come out too wide. So if you have the chance, right after you make your cylinder, try and choke it in a little bit. Because this is one of those times where it really helps to have a smaller top. The smaller the top, the less you have to choke it in while it's in that final form of forming. So you can just very easily make that stuff smaller now and make the job a little bit easier for yourself. This actually helps a lot because sooner or later you're going to have to choke in this very top part right here while leaving the rest of the cylinder alone. This means that the smaller this is, the easier it's going to be to choke or collar this inwards. It's going to be real difficult if you pull a cylinder and it's all flanged out right here and now you have to take all that clay and force it inwards. You do have to remember that the clay does get tired and will twist over time. This means that the more work you put on it, the more tired and more twisted it's probably going to have a chance of getting. So it's easier to just make this super small and get rid of half of that possibility while you're throwing anyway. Now we're just going to wet the top a little bit, wet the inside a tiny bit. Take your fingers in that focal point position right here and just start moving up the clay body little by little as you squeeze inwards, just like this. Don't start at the top right here and just try and choke it in. Start somewhere right about here. It's one of the reasons why I put lots of moisture right here. And start moving upwards. This will allow it to be a lot easier when you're choking. Mm -hmm. hey. 
By now you should be at this part right here, where the very top, or the mouth of your cylinder, should be smaller than the rest of the cylinder altogether. And by this time, you'll probably notice that it's starting to take on this kind of curvy shape right here. Mm, <laughs> yeah, yes. why? Potter tip! The one warning that I have for this is make sure that you don't make this part too small. We're going to have to stick our fingers back in here to modify the rest of the pot. And if, you know, the hole is a little smaller than your fingers, well, you know, you're, you're going to have a bit of a problem. We're almost done. Now what I want you to do is take a little bit of clay and pull this up a tiny bit. You see, usually when you choke in clay, you're kind of compressing clay into itself a little bit, which means that whatever you choke in is usually gonna have a little bit more clay in itself than the rest of the body. You can pull this part all you want, and you've stretched it out nice and neat. But once you choke or color something in, you're gonna have the ability to pull it a little bit more than you would the rest of the body. So you probably have a little bit of clay up here to pull, which is great for forming the mouth. After we've pulled up a little bit more clay, we're just gonna choke it in one more time so we can make a very small mouth to drink from. And always remember to smooth out the very top of your bottle by getting your sponge, arcing it downwards, and just compressing the clay a little bit. This makes it way more comfortable for whoever's gonna drink from this to put their lips on it, their smooth, kissable lips. At this point, you're almost done with your bottle shape, but you might want to fix a little bit of stuff at the top. For example, I'm trying to make something that's pretty straight as a cylinder and curves in a tiny bit at the top. But this is more of a slope than anything else. It's not really a curve. This is one of the reasons that whenever you choke in your clay body, I always say don't choke it in so much so that you can't stick a finger or two in there. This finger that you can stick in here allows you to morph the rest of the clay body by just one little finger inside of the clay vessel. And there you go, you have just made yourself a bottle. The bottle form is actually extremely easy to do because it kind of razors down into making a cylinder and learning how to choke the very top of your cylinder in to make a little spout to drink from. And that's really not that hard once you understand how to choke or collar clay. In fact, the only difference in between this type of bottle right here and this type of bottle right here is that this one has a little bit more of a curve. So I stuck my fingers in here a little bit more and pushed out a tiny bit more as I use my metal rib to correct the form. But in order to get this kind of tapered off edge right here, all I did is make a bottle like this, get my wooden knife, and I just kind of pushed the wooden knife in as I spun. And that bottom portion will slowly taper in and make this curve look a little bit more defined as I finish off the piece. One final Potter tip that I have to give you guys is that when I was making this shape, I had a very difficult time with the very top of my pieces. Half the time they'd come out like all wobbly and wibbly and I didn't learn that this was kind of my fault sooner or later because number one, I either didn't throw correctly enough while keeping constant pressure or I didn't wedge my clay or clone my clay on the wheel. But there's actually a very easy way to fix this. You see, half the time when I first started making these bottle forms, I'd get like, I'd get some of this where I didn't understand why, but uh, okay, that actually looks kind of nice. I would get some of this going on where the top of my cylinder was all messed up because it just had uneven clay. What you can do is you can very easily get your pin tool, put your finger on the inside of your cylinder while putting the other part on the outside and just kind of let it ride along this part right here. Don't stick it straight in, put it like this at an angle and just let it ride along this clay body and push in until the two points of your finger and the pin tool meet. Sooner or later, when they start touching, they'll make a full cycle, you can lift up and this will usually take off any imperfections that you have at the top of your cylinder. You still gotta smooth this part out even after you do that trick. Like we, we you know, we gotta make it smooth. We're not savages. Let's throw one more bottle just for demonstration.
Well, thank you, Dirty Ponos, for joining me today. I really just wanted to show you guys how to throw a bottle. There's two main things that you really need to remember when you're throwing a bottle. Number one, it's really just a cylinder in which someone choked in the very top to make a mouthpiece. And number two, you need to learn how to choke or call your clay. If you don't know how to do that, this technique is essentially lost on you. But the combination of pulling a good straight cylinder and choking in the very top of your clay pretty much is a bottle. That's really all it is. In the next video, we're probably going to go over how to make a nice curve within your bottle, much like this one, because this is kind of just like a straight cylinder, which is, you know, choked in, like I've been saying. But this here has a little bit more of a curve to it right here, as you can tell. This is where we combine the technique that you learn with a bowl, where you pop the body out and then bring it back in, instead of just doing this where you're making a straight cylinder and bringing it in by itself. This one's a little bit more complicated and requires a little bit more finger work inside the cylinder. But thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. If you'd like to see any of my artwork, the links are always down below. My new website's up there, the Instagram, the Facebook fan page to keep up with all my work. And if you guys don't want to miss a video, make sure to hit like and subscribe and I will see you Dirty Potters next week. I do also understand that like half of the video I've just been like, yeah, stick your fingers in the hole. It's real great. Yeah, no, just make sure you make sure that hole's big enough for your fingers, for your fingers.